Oh, it has started recording. Thankfully. <laughs> yes, it has started recording. You're here today because you want to apply for the care at home tender for West Lothian Council. Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, you have to find the contract. So, what I'm going to do is just search here for the West Lothian Council contract. I know it's called um, Care at Home, but you may not know that. So, what I would do is put West Lothian Council in here, hoping that I've spelt it right. Um, and I'm going to choose the type of contract notice, which is a current opportunity. And then I don't need to worry about any of the rest of it because there probably aren't that many. Let's see. Um, so these are the ones that the um, West Lothian Council has got out just now. Um, in fact, one of them closed yesterday. So the only live one they've got out just now is this one that we are talking about, which is the Care at Home Flexible Framework. Um, so, as you can see, um, it's due in by the 30th of June, which is 10 days time. Um, it was published on the 31st of May. Um, so, by this stage, I would hope that you're probably quite far on with your application now. Um, and, you know, you, you may just be finalising some of the things that need to be uploaded to it. So, just to take you through, the Council has decided to use PCST, um, which you may already be familiar now. Um, and as you can see, it's got a project code 24247. What you can do is you can click on it and copy that, um, just so that when we do go on to PCST, we can show you here. So um, there are some high level bits of information there, but we don't really want to spend too much time on, on that. We want to get straight in and look at PCST. So I have got a single sign in here, uh, courtesy of Fran, because she showed me how to do it many, many years ago now, um, which means that I only have to log into PCS, go to my suppliers area down at the bottom, I can click access PCST. And as if by magic, it takes me to the PCST. Now we know that this is an ITT which is an invitation to tender. So on this section here, you click into ITT. And I'm just going to check. Yep, so I had already tried to find it. So it won't actually find it if I do go into. So when you're first looking for it, you would go into this. This is where it brings you. And then you would go into project code and contains, and then you could just paste the code. Now, this is not going to work because funnily enough, it doesn't, it's as if you've saved it to my ITs, it's as if it takes out of this area. Um, but what you would do is you would search on that blue button and normally, um, if I hadn't already expressed interest in it, then it would appear here. Um, and then you just click on it. And once you've done that, you express interest and then it appears um, in your list here. You also do get an email from PCS to say that you have expressed interest in it. Um, so in this one here, if I just click on here, just a bit of navigation around the system if you haven't already figured out how to do that. Let's hide this window for a second out of my way. Um, so up here you can see here um, whether I intend to respond or decline to respond. Now, you've got to hit intend to respond for you to be able to see um, the whole of the tender. Um, and up here, although it's really difficult to see because the colours are just so faded, but this is actually like a tab here called ITT details. And within that tab, there are subsections where settings, buyer attachments, my response and associated users. And then up here is a tab called messages. And that's where you'll go. And you can see here, if I go into messages, um, again, there's subheadings under there. Create a message, look at my received messages, have a look at sent messages. Um, so if I, um, I'll come back to messages later on, because the main thing we really want to focus on just now is the actual ITT. So 
when you open this, um, the first thing I would normally do is go to the buyer attachments section. So in here, um, you can see <clears throat> the brackets tell you how many documents are within um, that folder there. Um, you can do a mass download. So if you click on mass download, and at first you think you should just say download selected files, actually you have to remember to tick this box here, um, and then that downloads all of those. So if you just click download selected files, um, and they will then appear in your downloads folder there. Um, and then you can save them to a tender documents file. So if I just come back out of there, um, that's just so that you can access those documents. The next thing that you tend to move on to then is your actual response. So you can see in here, there's two sections to it. Uh, we have got the qualification response and a technical response. Now, the qualification response is basically the equivalent of an, let me get this around the right way, SPD, single procurement document. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that is effectively the single procurement document, but in an electronic format um, in PCST. The good thing about this system that is a bit of a nuisance to um, navigate around unless you're used to it, and I am quite used to it, and even I get a bit, a bit mixed up sometimes with it. But what I do like about it is that you can see the individual questions, um, and so therefore you don't have to be worried um, about reading lots of documents to find out what you actually need to do and need to upload and need to reply to, because you can easily see them on here. So if we just take one of these sections at a time and go through it, you can see that the qualification response, a lot of these blue, the in blue writing, it, it's like a hyperlink, so you can click on it. Um, you can see over here that it says, I've got seven questions that I haven't answered. Now, when you have finished answering all the mandatory questions, it then tells you how many optional questions that you haven't answered. Um, and similarly here as well with any of these responses. So it's quite good if you're filling this out and you're thinking, where am I now? You know, how am I doing? How many have I got left to do? If you save and exit your response, you can scroll up to top um, and have a look at these um, again, just to see how you're doing. One thing to point out is this little icon here is a pencil. And what that means is edit or write. So when you do come in, um, you'll be thinking, oh, hang on a minute, how how can I click in the response? I can't click in the response, nothing's working. Um, that's because you need to go into edit mode and you go into edit mode by clicking on this pencil. So once you've done that, um, you can see I can now answer these questions and I can choose dates and so on. And the good news is that these ones are marked with an asterisk and they were dead easy to answer. So I've already reduced the number of uh, questions that need answered just by answering these two questions. <laughs> so it's quite um, satisfying when you get to doing that. So what you'll see here is it does then say that this is the SPD um, Scotland, which is used to self-certify the selection criteria. Um, so some of this, uh, information will already be saved. If you have previously done a tender using PCST, then it automatically comes through, which is great news. So all you have to do is read through it, check that nothing's changed, update it if it has, um, and then save as you go. So I'm just going to quickly scroll through this because this is all uh, my company information here. Um, so if there are any questions that you don't understand, do feel free to ask a question in the chat because you may have already been through this and you're maybe not sure what any of these questions are. Um, so in this section, you can put your um, who the key contact is. Um, are you relying on anybody to um, meet the selection criteria? So that could be just say you don't actually have a registration. Um, for providing a care for care at home, then um, you may have to reply yes to this and say in what capacity you're actually applying. 
Do you intend to subcontract any of it? The answer is usually no um, in the case of something like this. And then we come into what called section three or part three. Part three of the SPD is all the sort of mass murderer type questions. Um, now, if you answer yes, in this case, what it does is it comes up with these conditional questions. So it asks you for further details. So the good thing is, again, about using the system is you can usually fairly quickly see um, whether um, it's something you have to provide more information on or not. And, and sometimes the question is asked very clearly as to whether you should say yes or you should say no. Um, so it kind of helps with that as well. And just a wee tip, what I tend to do is in these bits here, we ask if it's available electronically. I usually just put a not applicable in if it's not applicable, um, rather than leaving it blank, because it's just really good if you can get to the stage where you don't have any answers remaining, and it just gives you a bit of um, confidence that you've answered everything you possibly can. So these are all still section three. You can see that here's section three A, section three A four one. Um, are all still the sort of yes, no questions. So if I just scroll down um, to the bottom of section three, I want to get to this. So for some reason, I don't know why, um, but for some reason, um, section 3D, question 15, they don't actually save um, from your previous answer. So you always have to answer these ones um, so it's asking you, have you been serious of misrepresentation? Um, have you withheld information? Been un unable to supply documents? Um, or um, can confidential information in influencing the, the decision process? So I can safely answer no to those. Now, in this case, the question is, is it a requirement to hold an authorization or membership of a particular organization? In this one, I would think the answer is probably yes, because presumably you have to be a registered um, with the care inspector to provide care at home services. So you would answer yes there. And if you answer yes, it does ask you for more information there. So you can put that information in. Um, so now we're getting down to section 4B, which is economic and financial standing. So here you can see that the buyer, West Lothian Council, in this case, they've input some details here where they're asking for professional risk indemnity, which is um, two million pounds, and employers in public, which is 10 million pounds. Okay, so what you can say here is, yes, you've already got it. Now, if you haven't, so just say you have 5 million employers and 5 million is public, then what you can say is you don't have it, but you will get it in time for the contract starting. And that will be fine so long as when the contract's about to begin, you are able to produce that information. Um, so this will probably be very small on your screen. It's even small on my screen. Um, but it's saying that they may use Dun and Bradstreet to assess the financial stability of tenderers, um, and they are looking for a score of 50 or above. Um, so if you don't achieve that, now not everybody finds it very easy to, to check what the Dun and Bradstreet score is, then you not all is not lost. You can submit three years of accounts and they will have a look through those accounts just to check that they are in good financial health. Um, now, in this, they're asking if they have uh, anything in the contract notice about finances. I would first of all look in the contract notice to see if they've asked for any ratios. Um, now, what they've got here is. I just think they're asking for Dun & Bradstreet, so the likelihood is that you could say that we um, can supply three years of accounts if required. Then I put a not applicable in there as well. Okay, now it's asking you to provide examples of similar nature that you have done in the past. Um, it's looking for two examples, so you can see your two examples 
um, where you have carried out a um, similar type of care at home service. Now, this little sign, it looks like a warning sign to me, but actually, and I don't know why it's not a paperclip, because that's what everybody would recognise as an attachment, but it's not, it's very difficult to spot if you don't know about it. But this is an actual attachment. Um, and what they've done is they have included an attachment for you to complete to demonstrate your two examples of past experience. So what you would do is click on that, download that, and then complete it, and then upload that document to there. They're also asking you about environmental management measures and um, what percentage of the contract will be subcontracted. They're asking if you have uh, any environmental accreditation or not, and if you can provide details of that. And then put your name, position. So that means, so I would be Julie Cahey, position is director. Um, uh, date is 20th of June and place at Edinburgh. Okay. So um, that's all that's required there. Now, as you can see, um, I don't know why, um, but they haven't made these ones uh, mandatory, but do answer them. Um, you, you will see that that should be answered. Um, so once you've done that, um, and, and there should, there's not really an awful lot there, the only thing that's going to take you any time really is writing up your, your case studies of experience. Um, the other thing I forgot to say, I haven't changed much anyway, but the system does kick you out really, really quickly. So I tend to save my changes on a regular basis. The only thing, and it is really, really annoying, is that it doesn't have an anchor. So when you save changes, it doesn't save them and keep you where you are. It usually saves them and then takes you back to the top of the page <clears throat> again. And you have to scroll all the way back down. I know it's not a big hassle, but it's just annoying. They could have changed that. So I'm going to save and exit this response. <clears throat> and what you can see now is that it's improved a little bit. Um, I now only have six um, responses that are missing and they're all optional ones. So rather than the mandatories, <clears throat> so uh, it's getting better. So um, let me know if you've got any questions on that one, um, on the qualification area. Do you use the chat functionality? Um, while you're doing that, I will move on and show you what the technical response looks like. So in the technical response, um, there are a number of questions here. Um, what I noted when I, I looked at this earlier is that it's a two year contract with an extension of two further extensions of 12 months after that um, at their discretion. Um, they are obviously there's the National Care Service, which has been on the cards now for a wee while. Um, which may mean changes during the life of the contract, so they have fixed price here, 22.52, um, and there's a discretionary increase to that um, on the 1st of April each year. Um, so in a way that takes the pricing side out for you, which is why there's no commercial element to this. Um, so there's really just the, the, the technical questions that you have to um, complete. So I did see that there's been a question about word count. Um, so I think that's found in one of the attachments that you can look through. Um, and you will see in here, uh, there is reference to that there. So it's 12 noon that the closing time is for any tenders. Um, so here you can see here that there must be some element of pricing because they've got 10% allocated to price and the, obviously the remainder is 90% which is allocated to quality and they've got all of these aspects here that they're asking questions on. Okay. Um, 
Right, okay. I'm not quite sure how this will work because they said that the pricing ratio is requirement of the regulations, but there's no price evaluation for this tender. Um, so you're not required to complete any pricing schedule. So that means that every every bidder will get full marks for that 10% um, because there is everybody's bidding on the basis of the same fixed um, hourly rate. Okay, dokie. So moving on then. Um, so there is an instruction to tenders document within the downloads there that we showed you at the beginning, which is why it's important to read through these before you commence. So um, you would say that you have uh, respond. You have read that and understood that. I see there have been quite a few questions asked. So obviously there are bidders out there who are reading the documents and have got questions on it, which is fine. So the first one is about the terms and conditions. So they will have attached uh, terms and conditions. Um, do you agree to those? Um, so if you've got no proposed amendments, that's fine. If you do have an amendment, then you would do yes with proposed amendments. There is a document here that you can download um, and you would put any specific terms in the contract that you're not willing to agree to. Um, put them in this document and then upload it. So this would probably be quite a good time for me to show you how to upload a file if you haven't done that yet. So you can see here it says attach file. So if I click on that, um, this box is in the way a little bit. Um, you can see here 100 megabytes. Uh, you've got to keep it to 50 to 100 is the sort of maximum that they recommend. Um, so what you first of all do is select a file. So just click select. Um, I'm going to just choose a random document. Um, then if I confirm that, it then uploads it. So it's as simple as that. Um, you can see how big it is. So it's six megabytes and you can also delete it. So if you've uploaded something as you go along and you suddenly go, oh, actually, I forgot to mention this. I want to go back and add this back in. It's you can easily just use the dustbin icon to delete the file and start again. So I'm just going to delete that and it says attach there. Okay, um, this is a declaration that you have to complete um, saying that you are, um, you know, that you don't have any involvement in serious and organised crime. So once you've downloaded that, completed that, you can then do as we've done before and just up, uh, upload the attachment. Um, so moving on, there's a question there about survey and giving your permission to, to do the survey. Um, then we come to one of the first questions that you'll have to write, which is about fair work first. Um, so what you would do here is <clears throat> take each of these elements and describe how these relate to your organisation. Um, anything that you are doing um, that you're active in here um, would go um, now that obviously they are keen for the real living wage. Um, so that is one of the things to see if you are accredited as a living wage employer. Um, so you it's not a case of saying yes or no to this question It's a case of responding to each of these points um, and then uploading that there isn't a template here. So it's just something that you would create yourself and then upload. Now, I noticed there were quite a few questions on community benefits. So there is a guidance note. There is a something here um, which you would need to download. Um, and I think what they've said is that um, because it's a framework, because you don't know how much business you're going to get, then what is expected of you will vary according to how much business you get. So if you've got a lot of work, if you've got a lot of hours, then the um, community benefits that would be expected from you would be pro rata to that. Um, so there is a method statement that you have to upload again to attach it here. Um, 
and then this is basically a yes you confirm that you will provide community benefits and like I say because you don't know how much business you've got then you can't really commit to much more than saying that you will do something but you can't say exactly what you're going to do but the uh, method statement can give an indication of sorts of things that you would be happy to do and uh, which will help the council when they're going forward to put these community benefits in place okay so just going down to see what else cyber essentials certification um, so they are looking for you to have this accreditation um, and attach that here. Um, and you can find out more by clicking the links that are presented there. Um, if you have anything that you do not want to be released um, as commercial and confidence, then you would put details of that in here. Um, you, you, you're you probably familiar with Freedom, Freedom of Information Act in that it's not really up to the council what they disclose and not disclose because if it's taken to appeal, then it's really up to the commissioner, information commissioner, what gets released and what doesn't get released. Right, so now we're coming into more of the written questions. So what your delivery model is, um, again, is a written question. Um, how you manage performance and deliver quality, um, how you um, have contingency and business continuity plans in place, how you will engage with service users, uh, what your procedures are with regards to adult protection, how you'll engage with um, West Lothian and as a st strategic partner, um, and then what your management arrangements are for your staff. Um, so they're asking you to be registered with the care inspector and have a minimum award of fees. Um, you have to say yes to that um, and then update your care inspector report. So that's us being all the way through this. If I now save and exit, I haven't really answered many questions so you'll see here that actually um you know i haven't really improved on where i was um and i won't be able to submit but um if i had answered all of the mandatory questions and i just had optional questions left then i would be able to submit my response up here um once you have so it's not you don't just complete it and think okay that's it the west loading council can see this now you do actually have to remember to submit it um, my advice to you is do not leave this till the day that it's due in. Um, do it at least a day ahead of when it's due in because you just never know when you're going to have internet problems or the site's having problems or I've, um, it's not happened to me but a company I know that happened to them where normally it takes seconds to upload a document like you saw but this one page document was just not uploading. It was going round and round and round and round and they ended up being timed out and then missed the deadline. So do not let that be you. Um, so we've covered attachments and response. I'm just going to quickly cover um, messages and then we'll see if there are any questions that crop up. Um, if you want to ask a message, then you go in here and you could choose. So just say technical envelope, just see if it's community benefits and type. Um, and then, you know, how, which document should I complete? Um, uh, so that's just to show you that if you have, if you want to, you can do an attachment. Um, and so just say you wanted to show them something, then you can add an attachment in the uh, question. Then if you want to, you can think, right, OK, I need to put a bit more information. That I'm going to save that as a draft. You can do that. It appears in your drafts. You can cancel all together or you can send the actual message. So obviously, I'm going to cancel this one because that was just a, a fake one. But you can see in here whether there were any sent ones that I've sent. Once you have sent a message, you can see whether the buying organisation has read it or not, and whether they've responded it, responded to responded to it. In the draft messages, this is where you would see if you've saved it as draft. 
and then this is the, all the received messages. So the good thing about this is even from West Lothian side, they can see whether or not you've opened it um, and when you opened it. So there have been quite a few questions. Um, and so what I would say to you is if you haven't already, then definitely read these questions because the, it can affect your response. So for example, in Cyber Essentials, um, you know, that's where you would have to go to um, find out what they've said about that Cyber Essentials, because it might be that some providers don't actually have the Cyber Essentials basic accreditation. Um, so I think that's really all I need to show you here. I've showed you how to do attachments and navigate around with being through everything that's required. Um, so I think that's really it, Fran, just really open to questions. Perfect. Let's go to questions. Let me just stop the recording there.